Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? We are live. We'll see how many people have gotten the notification. Eh, the app is not showing too many people. We'll soon find out. So um, we're going to look at web design trends in 2020. I'm just going to look at a few articles. We'll check out what the various people are saying about the trends. And then I'll give you my commentaries on that. Uh, before I get into it, I just want to wait for a few people to show up. Right now it says zero people. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, I got a few comments, but it says zero people. So the system, of course, is not synced up. 100%. How is everybody doing? Mm. We shall see. Three people showed up. <laughs> wow, the notifications really suck. You know, I just, I had sent this out like a half an hour ago. And just now my, uh, my system is picking up the notification. Hold on. Let me darken this image a bit. And when you're dealing with uh, daylight, it shifts every now and then, so I have to get up and change it. Hmm. Hey, Stefan, I brought your web design book today on Amazon. Happy to start reading it. Thanks for reading it. Hey, hey guys, how are you? What's going on, Vinod Kumar? Playing drums today. <laughs> no, no drums today. I don't think so. My arms are not, are not long enough. Mike Greer, I got on in time to see you live. Eh, there you go. Did you guys get the notification about a half an hour ago um, from YouTube? Let me know. Um, and also, is this loud enough? Is the mic loud enough that you guys can hear me pretty clearly? Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, now the mouse is giving me trouble. That's no good. Hold on. That's all, right. all hell's breaking loose. Okay, here we go. My mouse is starting to work again. Hello, oh, Stefan. I really enjoyed last session. I'm a beginner in React Native doing a job, and I want to increase my productivity as a mobile app developer. So what's your suggestion for a beginner? <sighs> write code right now. Write code. Start just building projects. You just got to You learn by doing, you know? Uh, all right. So my mouse is giving me trouble. Greetings from Hungary, awesome lunch. Coding Python as we speak. <laughs> Hi there from Austria, very cool, very cool. <laughs> no slacker. Did any of you get the notification from, um, from YouTube about a half an hour ago? Just now, wow. Okay, and my mouse is starting to act up for some reason. That's not gonna be good. Let's see what we can do with this. So what I'm going to do, if I can get my mouse to work. Wow, there we go. I just, just got the notification a minute ago. Yeah, YouTube notifications, not too good. I put out the word uh, on YouTube about half an hour ago. Mm. I scheduled something. Yeah, see, now it's getting really light. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Uh, see if I can turn the brightness down here. All right. So... Um, <laughs> Hi, is Ruby, Ruby is the coolest thing on earth. Oh, there we go, there we go. He's looking for a fight. All right, I really like mobile development, but the job market in my city only wants Java or web. Should I quit mobile dev? Well, it depends if you want to work or not. Um, I'm not surprised Java and web dev are very, very prominent. Um, you know, let the market tell you what to do. Uh, maybe if you keep working, you can find that mobile job, you know? All right, so um, let's see what we got here. Before this gets packed with questions, I know this question was answered on the forum, but do you think it's wise to start learning program 40 plus and what language would you suggest? I would go web 40 plus, more chances of getting into um, uh, mobile development, which is kind of cool. My mouse is really acting up on me. Hmm. Let's see if we can get this thing to work. My apologies, guys. I'm going to try to answer questions. This wireless mouse is now, as soon as we go live, all kinds of problems. Phone calls coming in. 
maintenance people doing the vacuum my apologies mouse work okay all right so let's just jump into the subject at hand we got about 100 people and then I'll do the Q&A uh, while my mouse is still alive and I have to figure out what's going on here so I just randomly search for web design trends in 2020 I just want to go over a few things and then we could take it from there so we scroll down so what do they say? Uh, most of these trends of web design are themes, continuous of uh, things that have been building, uh, that have been building web in design projects, more gradients, rule breaking typography, more plenty of minimalism. So let me just scroll down a little bit. Wow, this mouse is really giving me trouble. So we'll see what we can do here. So they say uh, minimalism with white space. Let's say, okay, I'm just gonna go through these quickly. Dark mode design, that's another one. Uh, yeah, 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 to give you this example. Breaking typography rules, uh, you know, mixed fonts, uh, fonts upside down. Uh, okay, what else do we got here? Let's go on. Artistic illustrations, here's an example here. Uh, yeah, 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 let's go on. <laughs> There's a point to this, hold on. Mixing illustration, illustrations with minimalism. Okay, what else is there? Liquid animations. Oh, that's interesting. I've never seen that. Take note of these design trends. Um, 3D, lots of 3D. Audio user experience. Okay, layers that overlap. These are kind of like general. The only thing I'd say, you know, minimalism maybe. Color changing gradients. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's one. I just want to go to the next one. Eight in an innovative design trends for 2020, different site. I have no, I just, again, I just searched for dark mode. Okay, we got a dark mode, guys. So we got, uh, they agreed on dark mode. That's one. Uh, so the dark mode is hot right now. Imperfections that add personality. Okay, that's kind of new. Imperfections. Um, kind of reminds me of the web in 1990s there. If we scroll down a little bit more, uh, immersive 3D elements. Okay, we have 3D. We got two consistencies. Oh, jeez. All right. Soft shadow layers and floating elements. Okay, that's new. That wasn't in the other uh, top 20 trends. Uh, mixing photography with graphics. Okay, that wasn't really mentioned in a previous article. Solid frames of white space. I guess they didn't really talk about that in the other article. Glowing luminous color schemes. All right. They didn't talk about that. All right. Um, ultra minimalist navigation. So I guess we got minimalism. Okay. So it's not bad. So um, close enough. And I guess that's it. So for this particular article. So let's go to the next one. 12 web design trends for 2020. So we'll scroll down here. Gradients, okay, we got gradients. Uh, you'll see why I'm doing this in a second. Abstract illustrations here. Uh, okay, it gives examples. Bold fonts, okay. These are all new, right? None of the other guys talked about that. Geometric shapes. Aren't all shapes and geometric, anyway. Uh, scroll down. Emotional design, emotional design. Uh, yeah, okay. What else do we got? Data visualizations, hero video headers, 3D and full 3D design. Okay, well, there's something that we saw in at least two others. Scroll generated websites. All right. I don't even know what that is. What's a scroll generator? The power of modern technology can help us create a lot more than just web experience. They allow us to create immersive visual journeys for our visitors. Scroll generate websites, track the user's progress as they scroll the page, and show contextual relevant information. Scroll generate websites use the power of emotion. Okay, we've seen that before. I think Apple may do that a little bit. It's it's. I'm not a huge fan of that uh, per se because it can get confusing. Dark UI. Okay, there's a consistent dark UI. Better personalization. That's kind of new. Uh, Design systems, what's that? Modern product design is all about speedy quality. Speed and quality, excuse me. Product teams should move fast without losing the quality along the way. Taking into account the fact that a single product usually should be released on multiple platforms, it's hard to achieve this goal. Design systems are the answer to the scaling needs of the product team. 
So that's basically uh, buying uh, templates, uh, themes. All right, so why did I go through all these? What I want to do is I want to show you guys that um, the trends, except for a few things, like a couple of them said dark themes, a couple of some minimalism design, it's all up in the air now. And uh, it depends who you're talking to, right? It depends who you're talking to whether or not there's actually any trends. I think there are some trends perhaps, you know, but I think um, they don't change too drastically year to year. So um, what I want to say is that the trends are overstated a little bit because at the end of the day, when you're designing the look and feel of an app or site, it really has to do with the subject matter, right? So if you're designing a site for a... Uh, you know, a video game, it's going to have a totally different look than a site which you're designing for an AI company or a site for a legal firm or a site for a restaurant. So I think that the um, style of the site has a lot more to do with the subject at hand rather than the uh, particular uh, trend that is now. With some, um, with some uh, you know, uh, variation there. Like, you know, minimalism, I think, is uh, a thing now. It's a general trend overall. Um, dark themes, again, I don't think I would use a dark theme on a wedding site. You know, they use, you use more or less a white theme there. If you have, like, a nightclub, then you'd use a dark theme. Anyway, I think... Um, <laughs> I like that. Said, said... That example of mixing illustration with minimalism is not minimalist, minimalistic at all. Uh, yeah. Even Stack Overflow added dark mode this year. Stefan, Jonas, Jonas X, I don't want to say, anyway, live from Portugal. Please answer MB's comment. Okay, let's see where we go. How should a beginner approach design, the design process for an idea for his website? I mean, understand being able to use the basics is one thing, but a website shouldn't look like it's ancient. Yeah, I, I think um, if you have to ask that question is because you don't have design training, which is okay. Let me just darken this. All right. You don't have design training, and that's fine. If you don't have di design training, what you should be doing is either partnering with a uh, designer or you should... Um, Look to templates, look to templates. And also check out what the competitor sites are doing in terms of their style. Like as I suggested just a few minutes ago, uh, design characteristics of a site, is, a theme, if you will, is a lot of time is dictated by the subject of the business, right? Like, as I said, a nightclub will have a certain look that's very different from a legal firm's look, right? You're not going to design a, a, a legal firm's website as you would a nightclub. That would be kind of silly. So that would be my... Uh, uh, change, Steph, change your title. Is there suck a thing? <laughs> Did I write, is there suck a thing? I hope not. Or maybe I should change it to that. Nah, okay, that's what you said. Anyway, whatever. I agree. MB has a very good point. After taking Steph, well, of course, I can look through together a web page with no problem, but all ones I created looked ancient. Yeah, well that's that's design. You have to just get into design. So um, what you gotta do is you got to, again, look at, look at uh, templates if you don't know the design and you have to uh, leverage the templates. If you know design, if you have a design designer's eye, which you, you have it or you don't, then, um, you, you'll be able to identify that. If you don't have the designer's eye, you should follow the basic design principles uh, and then white space, alignment, so forth, and then uh, just implement a template. Why understand design principles so you don't break the templates that you use, right? So, let's we'll see. Uh, we can hear it when you touch the mic stand. Really? Is that loud now? Huh. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta put the uh, low pass filter on. Uh, oh, high pass filter. Excuse me. Hi, Steph. Okay. Uh, hi, Steph. Laravel or Symphony? Laravel. 
hello, 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 hello. Uh, I think the web future will be PWA with minimal, minimal design. Yeah, could be, could very well be. I tend to just go towards minimal design as a, um, a knee-jerk reaction, if you will, as a default, because a uh, minimal design is just easy to uh, it's just easy to uh, maintain. It is easy to build. You know, I like having a lot of white space personally, and then you use uh, then it's easier to just decorate that page with one or two elements. If you have lots of complexity in your design, then it becomes becomes very difficult to to build and to maintain. But if you have a simple design, you can use one or two. Uh, graphical elements, the font, a logo, one or two photos, and it really sets the, the feel for the page. That is my recommendations. For design, the sound is just right. Okay, good, good. Wow, for some reason, just as I started the stream, my, um, my, uh, my mouse started acting up, so it's, th it's throwing me off. WebTrams articles, maybe just clickbaits at the same time. Maybe authors try to guess and if their suggestion becomes a trend, they will claim they were first to suggest it. Uh, elbow cough. <laughs> there we go. Okay, see? All kinds of calls coming in. Everybody's caught trying to contact me. They will have to wait until after the stream. The mouse is going. So I'm having trouble with this mouse, so it's getting difficult for me to get the questions. All right. Uh... Really enjoying felt right, less boilerplate, more productivity. Uh, PHP isn't type safe. Don't use it for your next project. You will get a lot of bugs at runtime, specifically for beginners. I don't know about that. JavaScript is not type safe, safe either. Uh, okay. Best way to reach me for technical issues with the interactive web developer course, just send me an email or just info at studioweb.com and somebody will get to you. Uh, that's the best way to doing it. Take the battery out and in. The problem is it's, uh, I just USB charged it. I think it's, it might be something to do with this, this browser that's open, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> Coding COBOL as we speak. Do you work for a large financial institution? Uh, okay, let's see what we got here. Java's life for the horde. I don't know what that means. Okay, 125. All right. Okay, the mouse is, is kind of surviving right now. All right, what else we got here? No, dark theme is great for wedding, especially wedding photographers. I guess so, maybe for showing off your images, but uh, I'm thinking about um, I'm thinking about you know sites that are selling uh, wedding services. Uh, I would be surprised. Could be wrong. Haven't looked at wedding websites, but I would think it would be more lighter colors, uh, white and uh, pastels and uh, you know uh, greens and pinks and stuff i'm a huge fan of your channel i have a question i hope to get knowledge from you i am 29 years old consider to study either computer science or civil engineering any recommendations check the job listings check the job listings with computer science you're probably going to have uh, a long term a lot more job security perhaps but i don't think you could go wrong with civil energy engineering I would look at the job potentials, and I'll also look at the lifestyle. I think civil engineering would suggest a whole different lifestyle than if you were a software developer. So that's what I would look at. I think both cases, the job opportunities are probably very good, come to think about it. But look at the, uh, look at the lifestyle. Lifestyle is huge when you're choosing your careers. Mm. All right, all right, okay. Uh... Is it normal to look at other websites for inspiration? Of course it is. You have to look at what's going on out there, how people are designing. Again, so let's say you got a gig to design a website for a coffee shop. Look at a whole bunch of coffee shop websites, then look at templates for coffee shop. You can just go to template sites and type in coffee shop sites, and you're going to see all kinds of sites. And then what I would do, especially in freelancing, I would choose the top three 
and send them photos, send your client photos, say, which one do you like? And then we can build off of that. Um, there's nothing wrong starting off with a web template, a visual template, because when you're writing code, if you use a framework like Django for a web app or PHP, you use Laravel or Python, excuse me, or Node.js, Express, you're using other people's code. In, sense, in a sense, you're using a template. It's interesting how developers, without thinking, will use libraries and other people's code for the back end. But a lot of people seem to be reluctant using a template to start off things. Custom design from scratch requires a high level of design skill um, that's way beyond code. It has nothing to do with design code. Design skill rather has nothing to do with code. It's all design. Um, so if you're if you if you don't have the designer's eye, then you should leverage templates or work with a designer who will then take care of that aspect of the process for you. Do you need to register a business LLC in order to start freelancing? Depends where you live, depends where you live. Um, in Quebec, for example, I think you don't need to register as a uh, sole proprietor until, until I think you're doing at least 50, 60,000 in sales. Uh, limited liability corporation, um, that depends. Like uh, you don't have, no, in, you know what? I don't know, depending on where you live in Canada, no. Canada, you could just go as a sole proprietor. I talked about that yesterday. What else do we got? Let's go down. Let's go on. Uh, what do we got here? Yeah, yeah. Lots of complexity is also going to kill SEO. Yeah, well, if you had to choose between how usable a site is versus how beautiful it is, and beautiful means how nice it is design-wise, I go with usability over design every time. Look at Google, look at Craigslist. Some exceptions, right? If you're selling artwork and stuff, then, you know, sometimes you have to have a beautiful design uh, for the type of business that your site is promoting. Uh, what is the exact difference between software developer and software engineer? Where can I consider myself software? When can I consider myself a software engineer? Software engineer is a type of engineering, and you can only consider yourself a software engineer uh, legally in most countries, as far as I know, is when you become an engineer. You have to graduate for some accredited university, become an engineer. Software engineer work on a broader scale, if you will. Uh, it can be conceptual. Um, it's hard to describe over a live uh, uh, podcast, um, whereas a developer is much more geared towards the nuts and bolts of actually building business apps and apps for people. I think that's the easiest way I could describe it. I'm probably missing something, but what are you going to do? <laughs> uh, my mouse is missing up again, so it's hard for me to select stuff. Let me restart it again. My apologies, guys. I got to get a backup wired mouse, I think. Yeah, there we go. Is this going to work? No, nope. it's not working. All right, that's great. You know what? I'm going to have to see. There we go. You're leaving money on the table by not answering those calls. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to have to take a little intermission here and see if I can get a, a mouse working. I got to get a wired mouse. I'll be back in about. Um, do I have a wired mouse? I don't know if I have a wired mouse even. Hmm. Okay, it's starting to work again. All right, so um, let's see what we got. Man, man. Sorry. <laughs> wow, this mouse is really messing up on me, so I apologize for that. All right, what can I do? Let me see if I can... I know, it's it's the software. When I go over the comment thing, it just starts freezing on me. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that's an interesting one. What do you think of offering a subscription model to clients? They pay a small amount, set up amount, then a monthly fee to keep the site up, charge them per hour for content updates, design changes. That works. 
you know, uh, things like Wix and Squarespace, in a sense, they are that kind of thing, right? They, they get the site for free, but they want to uh, they want to get all the features, et cetera, et cetera. Then they have to charge that monthly model. Now, with the Wix and so forth, they don't they give the person tools so that they can build their own thing. But they also, I believe, these services will hook you up with professional developers if you want to go beyond the limitations of their templates. So that's a good model. It works. A lot of people like to use that model. Uh, okay, okay. And goes that mouse again. Stefan, I'm a graphic designer, the one with so much ideas in my head. I feel like my mind is not tailored for code and debugging. Is it possible not to be tailored for code? You have, um, yeah, you can be predisposed toward code and not. I think that if you're not disposed towards code, I would still learn the basics. First of all, as a good way to train your mind. And the second reason is that it's just going to allow you, even if you don't end up being a coder, you could work with coders much more effectively. So you could uh, learn the basics of web design and development. And then from there, you understand how you can structure your designs uh, so that they work well with the back end. And then uh, if you hire a designer to just do take care to excuse me, hire a coder to take care of the design, excuse me, hire a coder to take care of the code for you. And then you could just say, here's a design, implement the code, uh, use Bootstrap. You'll know what you're doing, but you don't have to do it. So I would power through it that way. It's, it's the reverse, where this person was asking me, I know how to write code and I understand code, but my designs are not very good. It's the reverse. For them, either use a template or hire a designer to to lay out a nice looking page. You can do, you can work both ways if that makes any sense, right? Uh, usually people go in one direction or the other. Uh, hi, any advice to market your own Android and iOS games? Thanks. Yeah, you're gonna have to market it like you would market any other product. So you develop your game, you're gonna have to, uh, you know, put up a site, start promoting your game on social media, on your own site. Uh, you, I don't know if you can place ads within the app stores to promote product. You might have to do all that. After 669 years, do you still code? No, I'm not an active developer. I architect. I look over code on occasion when I need to. I, um, I manage the project, but I don't actually write code anymore. I just can't do everything. I can't go into the detail of code and then be able to come out of it and then manage a product on... Uh, on a global scale, if you will, let alone the business. So I can't do both. I've tried that. It's very difficult because when your mindset is in the business end of thing or the architectural end of thing, it's end of things. It's hard to get into the code, get deep back into the code. It's uh, that's just me. So yeah, but, yeah. This whole mouse thing is really starting to tick me off. Let me see if it's I can manage. Maybe it's the browser. I don't know. Some software is messing with my mouse. All right. Uh, LinkedIn considers the same software engineer and software developer. It could be. Back in the 90s, there was a distinction, though. There was a distinction. Thanks for the answers. You know what? My mouse is starting to work again. Uh, maybe I spoke too soon. It could have been Firefox. We'll have to say I just shut down Firefox. Seems like the mouse is getting better. Adobe XD is good for design, and it is free. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you have to understand, just like a developer can't know every single language out there, every single UI out there, every single cloud service out there, it's not realistic to think that you'll be able to master all these things. Um, it's also not realistic that you think you can be an amazing coder and an amazing designer. These type of people exist, but they're very, very rare, and they tend to specialize in one thing or another. Like one guy I've been working with for 10 years, very good designer. He designed StudioWeb.com, the, the look, and he can write code, but he doesn't like writing code anymore except for front-end code. He's much more concerned about just laying out good design. But because he understands code, he's able to de deliver the design assets to uh, the developers in a way that... Uh, uh, that makes sense. Uh, okay, and the mouse is starting to mess up again. 
Wow. This is the, uh, I'm going to have to change the title of this video. It's Trials of the Mouse. It's too bad. It's not working out. Let me try restart again. Sorry, guys. I'll get to your questions in a second. All right. Let's see what we got. Did it work? Okay, we're good. We got some action here. Uh, how do you deal with loneliness of working from home? Well, I'm not lonely personally. I got people calling me all the time, chats, um, and I go out quite a bit. I go out uh, at least once a day. Uh, when the gym is open, right now it's cl closed, I always go to the gym. For me, training at the gym every day or at least three, four times a week is as important as doing my work because your health is uh, part of your work. And when I go to the gym, I meet people I know and, you know, it works out there. Uh, do full stack engineers really get more control over a project? Um, depends on the company. Smaller the company, the more control you're going to have. Uh, uh, hey, Steph, do you think it's okay to use free bootstrap templates, connect and modify them to sell to your client as your product? Why not? Why not? You're selling your skills, right? You're selling your skills. And if you use a template, um, the assumption there is you're not going to have to do all that work developing your own template or your own uh, code for what the template provides for you. You won't have to do that from scratch, which is saving your client money. Templates make sense to, uh, to do. Any tips on pricing? Yeah, you're going to have to learn to price out your projects, how to uh, gauge how much time it will take to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm I go over all that in my uh, freelance course. It's, uh, it's not something I can go over super quickly. Hello from New Zealand. I've been working on a quiz app project, but I can't figure out where to start. Should I use PHP in my school? I learn JavaScript and or learn JavaScript and learn React. Um, it depends what you want to do. Are you a programmer at all? Do you have any programmer skills, Dwayne? Um, if you don't have any programmer skills, then that's what you got to start. You got to learn your HTML, your CSS, your JavaScript, you know? All right. Mouse is acting up again. Battle of the mouse. How are we doing for time? Okay. Uh, here we go. What OS are you using? Mac OS, Win, or Linux? If you use Linux, do you have a good book advice to learn the command line? Um, I use. I've used all three right now. I use Mac OS and Windows. I haven't used Linux in a long, long time. Um, any book on basic command line is good. Um, you know, it's they're pretty much standard across the uh, all the Linux platforms, with some exceptions. Um, any book, you know, just start with the basics, go on from there. Ah, my mouse. Hi, Stefan. What do you think about gamification in education? It works very well, I know, because Studio Web is gamified. It's been gamified from the very beginning, and it does help quite a bit with learners of all ages, interestingly enough. I want to become an Android developer, so I'm learning Kotlin. Is that the right decision? It's a good move. Kotlin is the preferred language now for native Android development, according to Google, and Google should know. All right, so... How do you get the dark lighting effect? What do you mean? In, in the video now? Let me know. Uh, all right, here we go. I've been doing front end. I understand front end. I know front end framework, but I can't understand back end even though I tried to learn. Can I, I can't get it. Suggestions. Well, try my course. Let's just try my course. I think uh, there's money back guarantee. And uh, so just try my course. I don't want to be a, a shameless self-promoter, but uh, my courses are uh, very good for beginners. That's that's what they're really designed for. So try them out. In fact, if you look after the broadcasters, I'll put a link below. Um, I have been offering this deal for a while, although, although I don't talk about too much. Um, a web hosting company out of California. So if you're in the U.S., they'll pay for everything. You just got to buy hosting from them. You're going to need a website anyway. And uh, they'll pay for all your training uh, with me. So just there'll be a link below where you can click through, buy the hosting, and then you reach out to me, and uh, we'll set you up with everything you need in terms of training. 
Stefan, every time I use Bootstrap, I feel like I'm being a noob. I love challenging myself with CSS. Uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um, but, you know, I think uh, when you start wanting to be super productive as a developer, the better and the faster you write the code, the more money you make, you'll start letting go of those things. But I totally understand where you're coming from. I was like that as well uh, at one point where I wanted to build everything myself. And if I didn't quite understand every nuance about a particular technology, I felt like a fool. I have to know everything. And then I learned later on, you just learn what you need to learn and then you move on. That's part of my need to nerd philosophy of development. What is the difference between UI and UX? UI is short for user interface, and UX is user experience. UI is the visual uh, component of your site, of your, of your interface, how it looks, how nice it is, the colors, the images you choose, the fonts you use, how you lay it out, how you lay it out. UX is user experience. It's basically how easy the site is to use, uh, where you place the buttons on your pages, where you place the links, um, how you color and format your links and how you structure the flow of your page. Is it easy to navigate and, 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 and work with? Is it intuitive? So they're two different things. UI is for the aesthetic look, how beautiful it is. UX is how easy it is to use. I consider UX to be more important than UI over, although they do crossover. Mouse problem, try another USB port or battery. Yeah, it's all wireless. It's usually a very good mouse. Just started acting up now. I'm going to have to do it after we're uh, done this live stream. But this is really getting on my nerves now. It's jumping all over the place. Uh, I like this. Hold on. If I could select Massimo's comment here, that'd be great. Don't learn to code, but code to learn. Exactly. That's very good. I think I'm going to have to borrow that from you. Exactly. Get your basics, then start writing real code. As you write code, all those concepts that are confusing for you will start, they'll start making sense, interestingly enough. By writing the code, the concepts become, become understandable. That's a weird thing. It's not what you think. It's not you have to study the concepts, and then you'll be able to write code. No, no, no. Learn the very basics, just enough to get, get you going. And by writing the code, the concepts become understandable. Stefan, I've been, I have been learning front end. I tried to learn back end, but failed. I can't understand back end databases. What do you think can help? Uh, again, I'll shamelessly self promote. Do my studio web. Um, you'll learn the back end like no other. That's, 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 that's my claim to fame, anyway. Uh, yeah, there you go. What can I tell you? Uh, would you advise a guy working nine to five program job with two years worth of FU money to quit job, start a software company? I would transition. Fantastic. First of all, good that you have your FU money. If people don't know, check out the search FU money uh, or emergency money on my channel. You'll see my FU money video. FU money is just emergency money. You have an account, but it's not for retirement. It's not for buying computers. It's not for buying a Lamborghini. It is there to cover all your expenses. So he has two years worth, which is fantastic, which means that he has enough cash on hand that he can pay all his bills for two years. It gives you a sense of security and serenity that you have no idea about. So even though you have two years worth of SU money, which I, I applaud, um, I would transition because... Until you figure out the, the, the business model of your software company, until you figure out how, what, the, what the niche is for you, that could take time. So you could probably work on that slowly on the side on weekends, evenings, when you have free time. And when you start seeing some traction potential, then you can decide when to uh, take that leap and leverage your FU money. Uh, all right. But again, you don't want to... You don't want to... Uh, piss away all your FU money on a speculation like a business. FU money is strictly for uh, uh, emergency. I hope that makes sense. All right, so mouse, all right. I'm going to probably have to cut this this uh, stream short because this mouse is just really giving me trouble. All right, how are we doing here? All right, we're at 40 minutes. So you know what? This mouse is about to die. It's, it's, it's like it can barely operate it now. And so I'm going to have to uh, end the stream. I hope it was useful. 
the main point was uh, there are design trends, but it's hard to find consensus. Um, I would stick to tried and true principles of design, alignment, um, type, basic type, typography rules, et cetera, um, and make sure and, and, and the design of your site, of your app, should uh, fall within the category of the business that your site represents. So, you know, a wedding site versus a nightclub site versus a legal firm site, they're going to have different design aesthetics. And you can look that up in the templates. So, all right, guys, I'm going to let you go because this mouse is it's driving me nuts. I uh, hope you enjoyed the stream. And I will put the link below for that whole thing where the web hosting will pay for all your training with Studio Web if you want to do it. All right. We'll talk soon.